Welcome back everyone to Random's Thoughts. Today we're going to be jumping in, as you can see up and over there, the world of RuneStrike because there is huge news in the world of RuneStrike with this new patch and I wanted to break it down, so let's jump in. We're pulling up the patch notes here and I'm going to read them out hopefully and we're doing this live on my Twitch stream. If you want to see some live Rune Strike or other games, hit up RTChompGG over on Twitch. Of course, likes and subscribes on this YouTube channel do always help. I'm going to read out the patch notes. Hopefully you can see them. Chat, tell me if it's completely illegible because the preview obviously is going to look different for me than it's going to, at least somewhat, compared to what everybody else is going to say. This is the week of July 25th, so we're a little bit behind on this. Version 1.0.45, and this is from David on the official forums. I'm obscuring some of it, but like I said, I'm going to read it out to you. And there are balance, rebalance efforts as well. We'll get to that. Hi, players. We want to get you up to speed on some changes to the game. Starting on August 1st, so today at the time of this recording, the next several seasons will use existing cards and cosmetics for the glory path. Leaderboards will also use existing badges. Obviously, this means we're not adding new content to the game for some time. Why are we making this change? Sustaining a pipeline of new content requires a great deal of resources. The technology we built allows for a lot of flexibility and configuration of abilities in the engine, but it also requires a lot of manual effort. Our goal has been to run month-long seasons and insert new content at a faster pace, but it's apparent that in order to do so, the pipeline needs an overhaul. Likewise, maintaining the card collection to achieve ongoing balance requires a lot of upkeep as it reopens the workflow around card setup, not to mention the need to sometimes redo FX. Our engineers and production team have worked diligently to improve workflows around this content, but ultimately, the ability to maintain and evolve RuneStrike requires that we overhaul the content delivery system. We have big plans for RuneStrike. We need time to design and build to bring those plans to life something we cannot do while we are also grinding out new content. We are shifting focus to create space to build for the future. During this time, we will remain engaged with the community, we respond to balance issues, and we will continue to provide player support. Once we have greater clarity, we'll share that news with you players first. Thank you for your continued support. We greatly appreciate the players have engaged with the game and the community, and we look forward to continuing our partnership with all of you. So, that, that's a lot of words. There's a lot to unpack, and we're going to do that now. Just to get it out of the way, as mentioned a moment ago, there are rebalance notes, and there are release notes for this, specifically that this release adds rotating bundles and includes a small balance patch, fix some bugs with Campaign 3. So the rotating bundles, again, to get it out of the way in the front, is they're going to be introducing new stuff to catch people's collections up, obviously grouped with the existing parts of the card pool. What those look like, I don't know. We could check out the store, see if there's anything in there already. But like I said, there is a lot to unpack from this statement. The obvious downer part of it is we're not getting new cards for a while. And new toys is usually what keeps people invested, gets people to come back to the game every new season. You obviously get an influx of players because they want to see the new stuff, acquire the new stuff, rank up, and then by the end of the season, people start to peter off. We'll circle back to this, but there, of course, is going to be a concern. What's the population going to do overall? And I'm not saying that it's going to drop, but what is the average person going to do? It's hard to say, but I would lean towards we're probably going to hemorrhage some people. And that's not me trying to, you know, scream the sky is falling, to, to doomsay, to whatever. The bottom line is, is that if most people, and we've talked about this in many, many contexts before, other card games, whether uh, other games like Phobies, Shooters, whatever, new content, new stuff, new toys gets people reinvigorated with something that they may or may not have expended the, the, all the content. And that's not necessarily that everybody's top tier player, that they have a full collection, but they've gotten everything they wanted out of it. Players that don't have that incentive to come back, they might start dropping off, not necessarily because they dislike Rune Strike. And that's an important distinction. It's not that they don't want to play Rune Strike, it's that. Well, there's other new shinies that are drawing them either to other games, they just have other uh, responsibilities, whatever. Bottom line is that the existing model for Rune Strike, as it was, and what it seems like it will be eventually, is something that 
keeps people invested and interested. That's the major bad news is we're not getting new stuff and therefore that could lead to hemorrhaging the player base, which admittedly RuneStrike is not an enormous game. Is that going to spell the end for RuneStrike? It's not going to help. I don't think it's going to kill the game at least not right now, because they can do this massive relaunch. And this is an opportunity. If we look at the silver lining of this, and there will be others, but one of the silver linings is that if you assume that they're going to do a major relaunch, the game still isn't on Steam, so maybe it will coincide with the Steam release. I have no information on that, but let's assume that it does for the moment. It's entirely possible that they're able to do a huge relaunch and say hey here's all the new stuff we have our new pipeline we're going to do monthly seasons we're going to do all this stuff and then great you can just start piling on the content and all of a sudden it's raining you know new stuff and that gets people excited again like it's possible to people who may have drift away during this time period then get sucked back in and they have a newfound love for rune strike it's entirely possible and i think that's kind of what they're gonna have to hope for so chat's asking for how long are we not getting new stuff? It was already the case that once every few seasons this would happen. This sounds like it's going to be at least several months. The way I am interpreting this. So they have to rebuild this entire pipeline. No real context to how long that takes. They're shifting focus and they said that it's going to be quote unquote sometime wherever I'm trying to skim for it. We're not adding new content to the game for some time. Whatever that is, or however long that is, we don't know. But to Chat's point, yes, we did get seasons every third or fourth season where it was just, that was supposed to be the rebalance season. And then since I started RuneStrike, that has evolved into, they're doing rebalances constantly. And that, I think that's fine. I think the model itself is valuable and definitely good. But as we mentioned on many occasions before, when playing RuneStrike, when talking about balance changes, when talking about a variety of stuff, the big thing is that the team is small. While they mention that it's, you know, they have their engineers and production team and this and that, it's still not that many people that are ultimately trying to do this. And the division of labor does break up who's able to do what and when. And of course, they have multiple platforms like many other games, and you have to push it through the appropriate attestation for whether it's on the iOS store, it's on Google Play, it's on well, hopefully Steam eventually. It's on the Windows Store. All these things are going to require different certifications and making sure that, you know, you don't run into bugs or other problems. There's a lot that goes into it. So I can absolutely respect that they have assessed where they're at and said, we need to fix this. It takes a lot to be able to do this and not just brute force their way through and say, no, we can do it. And then the game suffers either because of bugs, the game suffers because of balance, the game suffers because of, of absurd releases, a combination thereof, other problems. They've determined that this is the best path forward. And I think anybody who reads this or listened to me a few minutes ago obviously is going to get that initial negative feeling of, uh-oh, where is this going to go? And the fact that they, it actually gives me confidence that they are willing to take this risk and that the powers that be on the rune strike side whoever's above david and the team is saying yes we're going to give you the opportunity to do this don't get me wrong it's it is risky there's a chance as mentioned before that people are just going to drop off but i think that streamlining this and allowing them to make the needed changes at the pace that they need to whatever is going to make their lives easier so that we can get a better game in the end Ultimately, I think the community is small enough, and this has come up on many occasions, that the com because the community is small, it's very easy to have a handful of voices that are shrieking, and it seems like the sky is falling. It seems as though, you know, there are terrible things happening in the world of RuneStrike. And for the most part, I think RuneStrike's fine, especially in the context of RuneStrike, the population size, the quote-unquote meta which you could argue doesn't even necessarily exist, depending on what time of day you play at, quite literally. There's a variety of things that make RuneStrike better than people think it is and worse than people think it is because there isn't Hearthstone levels of population. There isn't Magic the Gathering levels of population where you have so many bodies smashing the game at so many hours that 
by law of averages, you're going to crap out something that's either broken or figure it out just from going through all of the iterations. I think there's still a lot to discover with RuneStrike, even in its current setup. And that's the thing is that I think a lot of people jump to many conclusions. When I say a lot of people, I mean, of course, the community. And like I said, it's very easy to assign a greater value to a small subset of voices than it might be otherwise. It's, it's kind of the way it goes for something this small. So long story short, I think this will be a positive change, but we're not going to see the fruits of the labor for what I'm assuming is several months. And I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do stream-wise in the interim. I uh, can't really, I mean, if there's more rebalancing things, we can obviously talk about that. There's not going to be new cards to break down because there won't be any new releases. I'm hoping that this new world where they have month-long seasons definitely gets them more in line with everything else out there. It was always a little janky to have the longer seasons and things not quite lining up with what people's expectations were. It's not a problem, but this is going to be a breakneck pace. It was already pretty quick the way it was, let alone the way it's going to be. It's because it's going to be even faster. And I think that was one of the problems. I mentioned multiple times in this recording alone that I do like the model. I think the model makes sense. And I appreciate that a game is trying it a different way than the traditional, we're going to drop a set every quarter sort of thing like other games do. Or three times a year. You know, something larger but less frequent releases. I think this model provides a lot of advantages but one of the disadvantages is potential burnout as described in this and you can kind of read between the lines like it's a lot of effort to cr try and crank this stuff out and not be able to do all the other things that are involved with making a strong game and that's again not to imply that rune strike is not a strong game i really do like the game i really do enjoy it i still do recommend it to people as one of the better card games that's available but in order to appropriately support it, I think the team is making the right decision and I support their decision going forward with this. I don't know how much more there is to say about the general idea. If Chad has any questions, feel free to chime in. We're going to switch gears to the rebalancing stuff and talk about it for this particular patch. And we'll see what's in store for us for the foreseeable future. First thing up, Odin is getting nerfed again. It used to double stats. Now... And then it was plus three, plus three. Now it's plus two, plus two to minions in your hand. I don't know. I, I still feel like Odin was fine when it doubled everything. Like Odin... Odin's weird. I, I just don't really see an issue with this thing. It. I don't, I don't know what to say. I didn't have a problem with it way back when. I certainly didn't have a problem with plus three, plus three. But this is fine. I think that hand buff could be potentially dangerous. Uh, it's very difficult once... Like, if somebody gets rolling, it's very difficult to, to push through and close the game out. But the thing is, is if, if you sat there and didn't play two Centaurians, didn't play two Zephyr Knights, and didn't do all this other stuff, like, what, were you, what was your opponent doing that allowed you to do all of this? So, if the answer is not a whole lot... I think it's indicative of larger problems with Rune Strike from a balance perspective that I am still of the opinion that aggro pretty much sucks. So I think buffing aggro rather than nerfing Odin is preferable so that there's more pressure so that the Odin player can't necessarily just sit there and do nothing. Now, in the control matches, of course, you will have more time, but that's the price you play you pay when you run a control deck. Like... It is what it is. Maybe 3-3 three, three is messing up future cards they want to implement. It's possible. It's possible. But I think the issue there is that if they have any hand buff, it's going to, it's one of those mechanics that like, if you have, and we're going to get to this card later, if you have things that scale off of their own values, therefore, if you buff them while they're in hand, when you play them for their war cry, their enters playability for anybody who's not familiar with it, when you play when they scale in that way that means that they're going to get an advantage off of it so no matter what it's going to be problematic unless you make it so anemic that 
it's not even worth buffing them to begin with. This is a legendary. You can only do it once. It has anchors, so you can't even bounce it and bring it back. I guess you could reanimate it somehow, hypothetically out of like Morlich or something, or, you know, there's a variety of effects that you could do it. Um, I don't know. I, I would rather see more pressure in the game push to try and end before turn 12. Because the assumption here is that you Odin on 10, maybe you accelerate it, but let's say Odin on 10, then you play first big thing on 11. That should get you into a decent spot, but not close the game up. Because your opponent will have, a, you'll go Odin, they have a turn. Then you play a thing, then they have another turn. When you play your second Odin uh, ally, minion, you should be able to lock the game up or close obviously contingent on how the earlier turns went and if that's the case all right opponent you had 12 turns why am i not dead i banked banked quote unquote whatever these other things were all for the whole game like what were you doing and if you're saying you're going to play a control deck well where's your removal you have nothing to deal with my stuff you weren't applying any pressure i think odin is there are two ways to look at this sort of thing. One is you could say there are systemic issues that need to be addressed. The aggros, the idiocy of dirtle deck mirrors, that sort of thing. Or you could say Odin is the problem and continue nerfing Odin. Now, I th I've felt for a long time that there are problems with the prevalence of dirtle decks. And I think that if Odin is the premier Dirtle deck, and when I say Dirtle decks, decks that basically do nothing, and they are so Greed Lord McSweaty Pants that they just go over the top of everything, and if you even remotely pressure them, they just fold. If this is, I crap on all the other Dirtle decks, I am the Apex Dirtle deck, then, okay, that's fine. Like, something has to be, so who cares? At least that's how I feel about it. I mean, I I don't even remember the last time I saw an Odin. Like, legitimately. It, multiple seasons, I don't think I've seen an Odin. I played Odin, and, like, it was fine. I'm not real sold on this change. But, you know, I'll trust him on it. Next up is Hero of the Highlands. So it says equipment here, but it's the blood ability for Brienne. Summon so a Crescent Guard to target slot. It is protected for one turn. So... This is pretty significant. Crescent Guard has been pretty oppressive. And again, this, is a this helps out aggro. This helps out mid-range, a variety of things. Because Crescent Guard was able to dodge an enormous amount of removal. And it was so sturdy, verging on invulnerable, especially in certain circumstances, that it felt hyper-oppressive. This was one that I wasn't sure about when they first made the change. It certainly was an improvement over the old Brienne ability. Like, this... Old Hero of the Highlands is not as bad as what Brienne's A3 used to be because it gave Blitz before, and I think people just underestimated how powerful that ability was. People were finally figuring it out, and then they changed it. But it's still really strong, and I think this is good enough right now to justify for 5 blood. We'll have to see, because protected for one turn, you'll have to use it more sparingly, but this goes into the same bucket of, again, the common refrain, blood abilities are the most powerful thing in Rune Strike and will forever be as long as they are even remotely powerful. They are three extra cards that you start the game with every game, and they're not like legendaries. You can use them as many times as you have blood, so the longer the game goes on, or if you have things like Bylight's Grace or whatever, other blood generators, you have you can build your entire deck strategy, game plan around a card that you will have in 100% of games. I did an entire video about this. The blood abilities are far and away the most powerful thing in Rune Strike, and I think that's fine if the game is built around it. Since we keep seeing changes and nerfs to the various blood abilities, I have to imagine that the team is not really comfortable with where they're at, and they've stated as much way back when. However, I think that they ultimately are, you know, they're getting there. And that's fine. We're going through an iterative process to try and make this happen. So definitely thumbs up on the Hero of the Highlands change. Is it going to be appropriate? That I'm not sure about. I hope this doesn't push it into obscurity and Brienne suddenly disappears. But I think our A1 and A2 are still valuable. So we'll have to see where it shakes out. Next one up is Retreat. 
Retreat, uh, it imposes a floor of one. Target friendly minions return to your hand. It costs one less mana to a minimum of one. I didn't even realize that it could reduce it to zero. I think I missed that, obviously. But this definitely makes sense. Zero costs are dangerous. Don't do it. We're good. There's really not a whole lot to say about this one. Next one up is the one I was alluding to earlier with Odin, because this is typically paired with Odin, if Odin even is in a deck, and that's Zephyr Knight. Uh, it is now changed back to being two attack instead of one attack. Still has speed, but the war cry is now enemy minions take two damage. I think this is probably the most balanced of all worlds, but I think that Zephyr Knight... How do I put this? Zephyr Knight was a big problem for aggro. Because it also could get used by aggressive mid rangey things because it's a big threat. It has speed, so it can immediately get out of control if you put any sort of buff on it. It now no longer scales with Odin, so you're losing access to one of the major components aside from like Centaurian. I can't even think of any others off the top of my head, although I'm sure there's one. Chat, let me know in the comments here, YouTube. You lose one of the major things that Odin would buff. I don't know. I was kind of fine with Zephyr Knight going the way of the Dodo. I think it probably should lose speed. Like, this might be fine, but lose speed. I don't think this thing should be a removal card and a 4-5. A 4-5 for 5 that... It's 4-5 because of speed, but the speed might be better than just a base 4-5, depending on the circumstances, obviously. There's certain things where it wouldn't work out in your favor, but those are edge case, I think. I think fixing the value, setting it specifically at 2, gives you a lot of options on the rune strike team side in order to make this work so i'm okay with this change i don't think it's problematic that it changed in and of itself next one up is angel of hope so this got a stat adjustment i think it was two six now it's a three six it was a five seven this is getting bounced back and forth it definitely got just clobbered in the last balance patch Definitely just got clobbered in the last balance patch. So I I completely understand this one. This makes sense. And I don't really... I was fine with it going overboard to try it, but I expected it to be overboard. I think I said as much in the last breakdown. This is fine. I, it, the incremental adjustments, especially since we're going to be in this period of no new card releases... Messing with the numbers on things are as good as a card release or any kind of balance change is as good as a card release. You're effectively getting a new card, better or worse, you know, nerf or buff. So I think it's fine playing around with it. I, again, I'm leery of this thing being playable just because it is sticky, it heals, it's fairly sturdy. There's a lot of reasons why aggro would hate this, which I know that is the purpose. After that, we have Hammerfist Giant. It goes from a 5-5 five, five to a 5-6. I still think I don't care about this card. I don't, it does, well, I take that back. This now hits a break point where things like Feast or Famine, Mana Spear, there's one other that I can't think of. Like, there's a bunch of removals that are, are at or around 5. And this hits that gap between Combust and Annihilate. So this can stick on the board and it's Vast and Trample probably don't want the vast honestly in most scenarios but the trample is very relevant so this may be something that you actually look at now plus it's pushing another valuable warrior if you care about that you know uh toric war leader for example and it's a giant because it also got that tag or has that tag and i don't think we really have any giant tribal stuff that specifically cares about giants off the top of my head but maybe that's something that shows up in the future so i actually like this change i'm excited to give it a whirl there have been a number of these over the last few balance patches where it's just tweaking something with a slight buff that gets it in consideration range where it was before the only time you'd use it is when you got it off the old hero of the highlands or something like that for the most part now i feel like having this particular breakpoint might be pretty significant so I like this one. Elder Giant. So this got a mana cost adjustment. It's now a 7 or 4, 8 for 7 Mage Giant. It's an order. Warcry, add a copy of a random spell in your opponent's void to your hand. Imbue one mana. Banish the original spell from your opponent's void. I don't even know. Was this a buff or a nerf? I don't even remember this card. Well, it's already 7 in the client, so I'm not sure because this doesn't label it. I feel like this is... 
too costly still. There are relevant reasons why you would want to mess with people's void, but I don't know. I just don't feel like I want to spend seven mana for a four eight that draws a random card. Now it's possible you can orchestrate a scenario where you specific you know, you play it and your opponent only has like two spells. Alright, I got a 50-50 shot of knowing what it is ahead of time. But even then that's not great. I doubt they're ever gonna add something where you can choose it just because of the way the game's structured, but I I don't know. I don't know if I like this thing. And I don't even know whether this was a buff or a nerf. That's the sad part. Next up is Mana Spear. Mana Spear is getting a change in cost reduction configuration. It's deal five damage to an enemy minion, keep, reduce the spell's cost by one, minimum of one. This was probably always going to happen. I remember when it came out and we were waffling around about, oh, well, do you need this in addition to Dimensional Rift? And it's like, well, if I get a free or basically free removal card without having to do anything like you're not jumping through a lot of hoops to just draw your card a turn or have it in your opening hand and then effectively lose zero tempo on doing stuff or of course magis or other abilities that let you draw cards like oh i found a mana spear here i'll draw three cards all of a sudden i can play it super cheap now you have to at least find it and then you gotta wait I don't know if this card is still playable. It feels like it could be because even after two turns, it's pay three, deal five, which is a decent removal spell. Like that's fairly solid. People run Pillar of Flame and that's four or yeah, it's cost four to deal four unless you have a buff, which then necessitates other resources. So this isn't awful. At base five cost to deal five, you know, you draw it late in the game. That's going to be super clunky. But I think this is the safer option. I don't know that there's really a good way to... And this kind of fixes the... If you wanted to tie it to reduce it by one whenever you draw your card for turn, we'll keep basically does that. Um, it kicks in earlier than waiting, but... It's a little cleaner to do it this way than the first time you draw a card each turn, reduce it by one, because you could also reduce the cost immediately to four. You know, again, use a blood ability, draw a card, and then it costs four. I can appreciate this. We'll have to see. Because the whole advantage of this is that you're getting an enormous amount of tempo. This takes a lot of that away unless it's in your opening hand or early on. If it is, it's still going to feel oppressive, so now it's just going to feel bad less frequently, which I guess is better, but it's just going to feel more pointed, more acute when it does happen. I can go with this one. Next up is Hill Giant. This is now a 4-6 for 5. It got a stat adjustment. Anchor Trample and Vast. I don't rem This is another one where I don't remember what the other stats were. I feel like it was... Smaller, like it might have been a 4-5. I feel like it was a 4-5, but I can't remember. Do I care about a 4-5, four, 4-6, four, excuse me, with Trample and Vast? I don't know. have any idea why it has Anchor off the top of my head. Like, none. I guess uh, I don't know why you run this over Hammer Fist Giant unless you want Rogues or you want Extra Giants. I guess the anchor protects it from opposing dimensional rifts. I, I, I don't know. This feels weird. It's just, it's a thick enough body that again, it survives mana spears. It survives famines. It survives a variety of different removal. So therefore it could be useful. The problem I have with this, which also goes with hammer fist giant, and this is the repeated refrain. These are more things that make aggro Try. Now, if you go to block with this and your opponent has Mana Spear, has Famine, has other damage, yeah, they're going to blow up your dude and or nuke your dude, run into it, and then it's gone. And you lose a bunch of tempo and you're still behind. But I think you could play this in an off lane and then you sweep their board, you use a plethora of sweepers, plethora of removal, 
play it how you should, like tempo positive instead of tempo negative by blocking, and then now they're just going to struggle to remove it because they they can't block for sure, and none of their removal is going to re- going to off it cleanly for the most part. So the anchor may be more significant than I was initially giving it credit for because the dimensional rift would be one of the ways out of it. This could, I could see it possibly if you wanted this sort of thing. I don't know if decks are going to have the space for it. We'll see. I saw people offline that were saying they've been, they were using it before. So I don't know. I haven't seen too many of them. Last change is Shadow Punch. Interact with targeted minions' mana cost instead of power. So this one is big. Now it's game power equal to target friendly minions' mana for one turn. Then destroy this minion. It used to be attack. So the big thing was shadow punching with void golems. And then doing it again with either a subsequent golem or a third golem or whatever because you did all kinds of shenanigans to make them enormous. Get multiple copies. Uh... It, through, say, Grizzly Void Caller. This was a Darlock build. And you could even get, the reason I'm saying you get multiple Shadow Punches, you could Darlock, you could Shadow Punch even twice, then Darlock it back because you removed everything with the Void Golem and, and have a pretty good shot of getting the Shadow Punch back. Like, you can do some really mean things. Or even you go Void Golem, Shadow Punch, follow up Void Golem, recur the Shadow Punch, Shadow Punch again, and you just tag your opponent for like a gazillion damage. I remember when I reviewed this that I was concerned about it. I don't know how much, I don't remember how much I expressed it, but this is one of those cards that if it was going to be playable, probably was going to be oppressive. Was it there? I don't know. A lot of people were absolutely complaining about it, but it calls to my earlier point about it's, the community outcry isn't necessarily a good gauge or something relevant to lean into a lot. It's valuable, but you have to weight it appropriately. And I don't know that there are enough people, let alone people that are invested, trying to orchestrate, is this the correct build of this deck? Let alone, before you like after you identify that, then finding what is the appropriate answer to the deck, if there is one or isn't one. So I think this is a better change. It is encourages probably what the original intent of the card is, which is I'm going to consume one of my valuable resources in order to try and close out a game, be that one big shot that your opponent wasn't expecting because it's coming through the champion, so there are very few ways to prevent it. You know, you'd have to do like Sanctuary or something like that. Is there a way to abuse this now? I mean, the most you're getting out of it is 10 because the power, or excuse me, the mana will reset even if they dimensional rifted something to 11 to your hand, well, that it caps out at 10. But somehow something ends up at like 11 or 12 cost and you magis it out. You know, you do some sort of ramp and you get it into play. It's going to reset the mana when it hits the board. So the maximum you are doing with this is 10. You could still do the recurring void golem shenanigans because that doesn't go away. But you're only doing four off of this thing instead of like 30. Big difference. Or five. Whatever Void Golem costs, I don't remember. Point is that it's a lower threshold. So I like that change. Overall, I think the changes are pretty solid. I'm really curious how many of these we're going to be getting going forward, given the context of the rest of the patch. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Overall, general thoughts. I like the the changes, the balance changes. I understand why... The team is taking this risk and going with what we're going to see for the foreseeable future. I trust them that it's going to pay off positively. I think that there is a lot of potential for this. I hope that they take their time, they get their feet under them, they get everything how they want it, and that they're going to be able to come explosively out of the gate and everyone, you know, the big new thing is going to be Rune Strike. I really hope that happens. As mentioned, there is a risk. It's entirely possible this blows up. I don't think it will immediately, but it's not impossible. We just have to be realistic about that. I don't, as mentioned earlier, I don't think anybody can read this and not immediately have some of those thoughts come to mind. But to allay some of that, I think that 
they must have had this idea for a while. They must have weighed the costs and the benefits, and they determined that it's still appropriate to go this route and that this is the best path forward. So I'm going to trust them. We'll see how everything turns out. But that's going to do it for this patch breakdown. Let me know down in the comments if you have other thoughts or what your general thoughts are on this change, the balance changes, what you think the future of Rune Strike is going to be. And come by the live stream, RT Chomp GG over on Twitch. You can, of course, always talk Rune Strike and other games in the Random Slots Discord. It'll be in the description of this video. But for now, everybody, that's going to do it. So as always, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And Black Lives Matter.